Hi, I'm Naomi Kadana. And I'm Channing Schoenberger. And we are both graduates of the Biomimicry Master's Program here at ASU. We're here today to tell you a little bit about William Morris and biomimicry and biophilia, uh, the difference between those two words and actually what they have to do with Morris. So some people might be wondering why biomimicry and biophilia together? Well, actually biophilia is part of our, our lessons in biomimicry. Uh, biomimicry has three pillars that is everything is founded on, which is the ethos, the emulation, and then the reconnect. And the reconnect portion of that is biophilia. How do we connect as individuals to nature? Yes. So William Morris was famous for being a biophilic. He created textiles, most famously the Kelmscott Press, and he was always known for incorporating things like vines, flowers, birds, plants, different things into all of his art and his textiles. He was alive, as some of you might know, during the Victorian era. The Victorian era was a time that was famous for its ingenuity, first industrial revolution. He was alive during the same time as Charles Dickens and Charles Darwin, which is obviously famous for the theory of evolution. It was a great time to, to be alive and to just experience all of those creative, monumentous things that, that happened in, in human society. Yeah, game changers. Absolutely. Complete game changers. The one unique character about uh, Mr. Morris is he was before his time. He used this attachment that us humans have to nature to create his textiles and bring them to life and add, add value that way and bring that nature into the home and business. Yeah, and he was always famous for saying things like the fastest and cheapest way to make things isn't always the best way, um, which is actually kind of a segue into what how nature does things. So we want to give you a little bit of a background about two terms. One is biophilia and the other is biomimicry and kind of what those have to do with William Morris and, and during his time. So if you want to ex explain to them, Channing, a little bit about biophilia. Certainly. Biophilia is something most of us are aware of, but seldom understand that we're actually looking at or feeling. Uh, biophilia is the, our innate attachment to nature. We see biophilia actually quite a bit. We happen to have some right here. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the, the incorporation of nature in our living space. Mm -hmm. The term biophilia was actually first used by Eric Fromm in, I believe, 1964 in his first book, where he was describing that Biophilia is the love of life. And with that, E.O. Wilson came in and further defined it as the hypothesis that we as humans seek an attachment to nature. Even now, today, it's even morphed into something that's it's no longer hypothesis. There have been so many published papers about how nature is so important to, I'll just say the human soul, the human condition. We have to have that, that touch of living organisms that are not just human. Yes. So it's amazing that he's done that. A century before E.O. Wilson gave it a hypothesis and a, a definition. Uh, Mr. Morris was actually practicing biophilia in his textiles and uh, manufacturing his books. Uh, even in his books, he's got primrose and apples watermarked into each, each of the pages, which yes. is amazing for the technology back in the 1800s. Biomimicry is a little different and even though they both work with nature in a very specific way, they are very much different. And I want to ask you to talk about biomimicry. Okay. Biomimicry is the emulation of nature's forms, processes, and functions. It's how nature works. It's emulating the genius of, of why and how nature does what it does. Uh, replicating, you know, um, a way of doing things, a form of something, rather than bringing actual, the actual plant or the organism indoors it's creating designs with the concepts the designs of the way, the way nature does things in mind so that's what makes it a little bit different and you might be thinking well what does that have to do with William Morris well that's a couple things to do with him William Morris was famous for saying have nothing in your houses that you do not find useful or believe to be beautiful so he was he was pretty much saying you know uh, it not you don't want to waste anything you're not having something there that doesn't have a purpose and nature really creates in that same way it doesn't create waste it doesn't create excess or unnecessary components and that's what William Morris's designs he believed to to also you know incorporate have nothing in your house that you don't find useful or beautiful that is such a profound statement 
if you really think about what it means, it's about the quality of your life or the quality of the things that you do or have. Quality, and we don't have that anymore. We are a single-use society, and if you look at his textiles and his publications, even his books, his first books, written on linen paper, bound in pigskin. Two things that are enduring for a very long time. Yes. I, I would rather buy something that's a little more expensive and never buy it again than to buy, well, like our culture has now, all these single-use problems and creating the waste that we have. I agree with you too. We do live in a, you know, single-use society today. So it really just speaks volumes that he, he understood the importance of taking pride in your work you know, making things that, that really lasted. And, and I think things in, in nature are that way. You know, a, a tree is meant to grow for, you know, hundreds of years. It's not something yeah. that just, you know, is planted and cut down the next day. And then speaking about your, your reference to the pigskin books, you know, we now we have ebooks. I mean, everything, everything evolves. But I think if we can do designs, designing in such a way that, you know, we aren't creating excess waste and we're not yeah. making things just to be thrown out in single use, I think we could really make a difference in the longevity of humanity on this planet. Completely. Yeah. Completely agree. If you want to know more about the topics that we talked about today, you can find out more information at our website, which is lib.asu.edu forward slash nature maker. Or if you're around campus, please come down to the Tempe ASU campus. We're in the Design South Building, Suite 126, that houses both the Biomimicry Center and the Nature Maker and you can see working examples of both biomimicry and biophilia in action together.